Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a lingonberry cold process soap. This is a slightly more advanced cold process recipe, so if you've never made soap before, please stop right now and watch the first four episodes of Soap Queen TV to learn the basics about soap making, including safety. This bar is chock full of skin loving oils, including shea butter and lingonberry oil. Lingonberry seed oil is very lightweight and silky and absorbs easily into skin. The fragrance we're using for this is Lingonberry Spice from Brambleberry.com's new Hoge collection. And Hoge is this amazing word and concept that comes from the Danish culture that basically means comfort. And it smells mm, like, well, kind of almost an apple spice cider. So it's got some apple notes, some berry notes, some cinnamon notes, and some clove notes, and some vanilla. And that vanilla makes the bar discolor just a bit. Now, what do we do about discoloration? Well, first of all, we're adding a ton of titanium dioxide to this bar. That's how we got it to stay this color. And of course, if it changes color between now and when I post a video, I will put the new photo up so you can see it. But I made this like two weeks ago and it's staying this great color. This recipe also has a 15% water discount. Why did we water discount so much? Because that's a pretty big water discount. We did it to help prevent glycerin rivers because when you use an excessive amount of titanium dioxide in your cold process soap recipes, you'll end up with what we call glycerin rivers. And it's basically little clear rivers of pure glycerin. Now they don't hurt the bar at all, but they do kind of ruin the look and our design. Doing that water discount helps to prevent that. This recipe, you'll notice, uses charcoal lines to add some interest and some depth to it. We did choose a fast-moving recipe, so you're not going to be waiting forever for these layers to set up so you can create that texture. Charcoal is a little bit persnickety to work with, though, so when it comes time for me to demonstrate, you'll notice I really am taking care to deal with it gingerly because, man, it's a pain to clean up. So when you're doing it, make sure you're extra careful when you're playing with those charcoal for the charcoal lines. On the top, went ahead and did these beautiful rose hips and rose hips are the berries that come off of rose plants. I didn't even realize that, but they make these really cute dried berries that are perfect to put on the top of your bars. And then to add interest, we went to the local flower shop and we got some myrtle leaves and we dried them ourselves. Now you can use any leaf, but really if you're drying it yourself, you want to make sure it's got a th thick enough texture that it'll be able to suspend itself on the top of that soap. The most important part of soap making is of course safety. So I'm in a well-ventilated area, there are no kids or pets around, and I know I have at least an hour of uninterrupted time to make this soap. And I'm suiting it for safety with my long sleeves, my long pants, and my closed-toed shoes, and also these awesome glasses from Brambleberry. I love them because they're so cute. They cover a huge portion of my face. And my gloves. Just gonna struggle to put the gloves on. We'll just do it together though, it'll be good. So much about successful soap making is really in the preparation. So I've got my oils here already. I've already mixed my lye water and I did put the sodium lactate in the lye water. Now sodium lactate is a natural salt that helps to harden the bars more quickly so I can release it from the molds more easily. One of the things I'm doing with this recipe is because the entire batch needs titanium dioxide is I am putting in my titanium dioxide into the entire recipe rather than pre-mixing it in oil and then adding it. This recipe already has a 5% super fat and I'm doing a full four teaspoons of titanium dioxide. And so you'll notice when you use the titanium dioxide that you might struggle to see trace a little bit. Remember when I said this was a more advanced recipe? That's one of the reasons. So when you're trying to find out if you've got trace, you're really looking for texture more than you are kind of that trace and that trailings because of that titanium dioxide kind of taking away the ability to differentiate the trailings. So, taking my trusty Brambleberry stick blender, putting it all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna burp it. I'll turn that on. I'm going to mix in that titanium dioxide right now and just kind of disperse it. And since titanium dioxide tends to clump up, I'm going to do this for a good like full minute, minute or two. I'm not going to force you to watch that, but make sure when you're doing this at home that you don't end up with any white clumps because the white clumps when you're showering literally will leave white streaks on the user's body. Now that my titanium dioxide is fully mixed in and I made sure it's mixed in, I'm gonna pour my lye water solution slowly, 
slowly down the shaft of the blender. And the reason I do that is just to help to prevent air bubbles. In thick soaps like this especially, you definitely notice the air bubbles. So I do everything I can to prevent them. It's not that big of a deal, but from an aesthetic standpoint, I like to avoid them. So now tapping the stick blender on the bottom, I'm gonna just work to get trace. And remember, since you can't really see kind of the depth of your soap here and you can't really see the trailings as well because of that white, you're really looking for the texture. This lingonberry spice from Brambleberry does accelerate just a little bit, not much at all. So I'm just gonna use the stick blender to hand stir it in. I might hit it really quick, like for four seconds with the stick blender, but not much at all. Because again, I wanna be starting with a kind of medium trace when I start working with my layers. Another reason that this recipe is gonna also move is because of that high percentage of butters in here. So we've got a water discount, we've got a high percentage of butters. So yeah, this is just gonna move a little bit more quickly than some of your basic beginner recipes. So now I can see that we have a really good texture that is gonna be easily manipulatable by my spoon for that first layer. So it's time to get my mold over here. This is the five pound sliding bottom mold from Brambleberry. I love it because literally when you're ready for the soap to come out, you can either slide the whole bottom out or you can just pull up on your silicone liner. Love this silicone liner. I have about 80 ounces here. Now I'm gonna eyeball, I, you can weigh this if you really, really, really care about even layers. I'm not going to. I'm gonna eyeball about 20 ounces out of my 80. So, I'm just gonna pour slowly. You can see how nice that gorgeous traces. Don't worry if you feel like your silicone liner is sort of, oh, okay, yeah, right at 20, perfect. If you feel like your silicone liner is kind of flopping here, don't worry about it. It's not going to stay flopped at all once you fill. So now I'm just gonna texture, because again, I really want some texture and depth in there. So it adds interest to the bar, because we're looking for a rustic chic look here. So just texturing in here. And now it is time for the charcoal. Remember how I said the charcoal tends to go everywhere? I am just going to gently, and this, you guys, it is literally lighter than air. So I'm gonna gently put a little bit of charcoal in here, a little bit of charcoal here, and then I'm just going to tap, tap, tap all the way down. I did that in the last video. It did not endear me to my team because I blew charcoal all over the table. So now I'm just very carefully trying to get full coverage of this charcoal without doing any sort of blowing. And that looks really solid. And now I'm going to put this to the side and then I'm gonna stir really quick to get this to work and get ready to put the next layer on. I'm gonna take a big spoon because this is getting really thick and I'm just gonna plop it on there. Again, we're going for about 20 ounces with this next layer. And the reason I'm plopping it on there is a couple reasons. One, this is really great texture. It's so thick. It's not gonna pour that easily. And when it doesn't pour that easily, what ends up often happening is you have to pour in such large clumps that you kind of can break through that first layer. And the whole point about doing layers is to show that mica line in the middle. So I'm just gonna get full coverage of the soap, gonna kinda look to see how I did here. And then, I'm gonna tamp to get it all the way down. I'm gonna take this, gonna give it some texture again. Because remember, we want this to look rustic chic. We want it to have waves on the inside. I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap carefully. Because the less cleanup for everybody, the better. And charcoal is an excellent ingredient in all cleansing bars anyways, because it has great detoxifying properties. You may notice it's all the rage right now in all kinds of facial bars. So that's gonna really help this particular soap, not just for its looks, but also how well it cleans your skin. So you'll notice that this is getting a little bit thicker we have plenty of time to work with it and that's going to really help us on our very tippy top layer because the very tippy top layer, we have this super fun fork design we came up with that showcases our beautiful texture. So now I'm just kind of making sure that we have it all the way to the side because I want to save enough for my top. Plopping down and texturing. And then once it's textured nicely, 
So it's very clear that we were going for uneven lines. We're gonna repeat that process with the charcoal. And now it's our final layer. So I'm gonna be a little bit more careful with my plops because I really wanna make sure that there's enough soap to cover. And the smells so good. I can smell those spice notes and I can smell those berry notes. I can completely see why this was saved for kind of a fall launch because it really smells like a spiced apple cider with some berry notes. The clove and the cinnamon is just wafting up and smells amazing. And once I've scraped out all of the soap, I'm going to do the tamp down again and then I'm gonna take a fork and create a really great texture on the top of this. One of the keys to making this design work is we're gonna give this the smoothest texture possible. So I'm just gonna be using the back of the spoon to kind of try and just give it a very flat surface. However, I do have a little bit of charcoal on the sides of my mold, and so I'm trying really hard not to pick up the charcoal and accidentally give my soap a give my soap any sort of charcoal line going down it because it'd be really easy to do that. So now I'm just taking a plain household fork, taking the bottom of it, and I'm just pulling it towards me. And remember, since we went to this beautiful thick texture, it's going to do the design of the fork tines beautifully. I've got a paper towel here so I can easily wipe off in between my swipes for my soap and at the end I can always clean up on the side if I need to. I notice that I am starting to also go not perfectly horizontal anymore so I'm going to clean that up and go horizontal because it was kind of getting a little off but the horizontal is really nice, the perfectly straight lines for the design. And you'll see that in just a minute when we start placing our berries and our leaves. I do notice that I have a little bit here that's not perfect. You can always go over this and do it again. So now I have perfect horizontal lines and I don't really like the depth of this line, so I'm just gonna fix that one. And you can play with this forever. I'm gonna call it good and start placing my berries. The key to placing your berries in your leaves is twofold. One, wherever you place a berry, remember that's gonna be where you naturally want to cut your soap. So kind of decide how wide you're going to want your soap and then place your berries, in the, place your berries accordingly. Some people actually will take a ruler and mark the sides of their silicone mold with a Sharpie with exactly where the either three ounce, four ounce, or five ounce uh, cutting marks would be. So if you are making these to sell, that is a great idea to save yourself some trimming time in the end. Since I am making these to show you how to make it, I am eyeballing it, but I think that idea of the ruler and pre-marking ahead of time is a huge time saver, especially if you're in business. Once you have every single bar with a rosehip on it, it's time to place your leaves. And you can kind of just place them however you want, just off to the side. And since you're still wearing gloves, you can kind of shove them down in there because you really want them to stick. And they're going to come off in the first washing. They're just to add interest to this bar. And it really adds a beautiful kind of holiday feel to it. But really, these bars would be gorgeous year round. Like I could see these bars as a beautiful wedding favor, for example. Now, you don't have to do two for every one. You can kind of just customize it to the leaf. For the smaller ones, I like to do kind of two. For the bigger ones, I just like to do the one for interest. It's totally a personal preference thing. And now, finishing touch is we are gonna take our rubbing alcohol and spray it liberally all over the top of our soap. And the reason for that is it helps to prevent soda ash. And soda ash is a natural salt. It doesn't really hurt anything, but it does make the bars look a little unsightly. It might not be the look like you were going for. And so this is 99% rubbing alcohol and it helps to prevent that soda ash. I usually give a, a spray right now and maybe another one in 30 or 45 minutes. So if you live in a really hot area, you might wanna put this in the refrigerator because another thing that contributes to those glycerin rivers that we talked about earlier is heat. So you 
don't necessarily want this bar to go through gel phase because if it goes through gel phase, you have a tendency to form those glycerin rivers. So if you're in a hot area, put this open the fridge or the freezer for a good 24 hours before popping it out. I made this batch earlier so I can show you how to first of all release it from the mold but also how to cut it. I find that these are a little bit easier to release when the bottoms are off and so that's the nice thing about the sliding bottom mold from Brambleberry. And ooh, then you can just kind of shake it out or push it out depending on kind of how it is. And I notice it's coming out really nicely so I'm just going to pull. There we go and put this off to the side. It's got a little bit of charcoal on it, so make sure you're careful with it. And then we can pull gently away on the sides. I notice there's some charcoal on the sides of this mold. So given how charcoal is so pernicious, it gets everywhere. Keep that in mind when you're pulling away from the sides. You don't wanna get it on your hands. And then gently pull away from the sides. And now, we can break the airlock on the bottom. Now we have, of course, texture on the top, so we don't wanna just plop this straight out. Whew, a little soft, but it's gonna to be totally manageable. Gently pulling, gently pulling. Don't want to tear the bottom. Oh, it smells so good, you guys. I can't get over how good this smells. It smells just like fall. So now, have our soap came out beautifully. I have a little bit of charcoal on my hands, but not too much. Taking my non-serrated knife, I'm going to cut that first bar in between the two rose hips. And cut beautifully. Let's see how that looks on the inside. Notice we have a little bit of charcoal dust coming down. So there's a couple things we can do. First of all, let me show you how to place this on its side to help reduce some of that charcoal drag line. You're still gonna get a charcoal drag line, but it won't be nearly as much. And then I'm gonna show you how to clean up that charcoal drag line. So from the side, you have to be a little bit more careful to not chop the tops of those berries. And then you'll notice that this one here that I cut from the side has a little bit less charcoal drag line than this one. So when you wanna clean this up, it's super simple. You just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. You literally spray this down and you wipe it off. So notice how there is a perfect square of fragrance discoloration right here. That's gonna go away. The entire bar is going to evenly color this color. So when you first cut this and you're like, wait, why is there this square of fragrance discoloration? That goes away. So now let's try and get this cleaned up. Spraying with rubbing alcohol, and then just gently kind of wiping. And this takes a little bit of patience, which is why that side cut is such a good thing, because that saves you a little bit of time. But it's worth it to clean up the bars. Mm, I see it coming off beautifully. So you'll notice this looks a lot better now, and it's totally ready for prime time. There's another way to get rid of these though. You can actually use a soap shaver to just shave off the very kind of top of this. So let me show you how to do that. So this is the brambleberry.com shaver, and it's got two different settings. We're gonna do it on the very highest setting because we're just trying to shave off a little bit of that kind of charcoal. So one of the things I like about this is you push it on the counter, which gives it some stability. To get this to glide really easily, I'm going to spray with rubbing alcohol here on this initial platform. And then I'm gonna take my bar and going down the side, just shave a little bit off so we end up with a really beautiful clean line. And then I can do that on the other side as well. So spray with rubbing alcohol and down we go. Firm, gentle, even pressure and perfect. That looks even better than cleaning up with rubbing alcohol, but the rubbing alcohol is great if you don't have one of the brambleberry.com soap shavers. So let these sit for four to six weeks before using them or giving them away. And until next time, you guys, thanks for watching. The most important part of soap making is, well, safety. So I've made sure I'm in a well-ventilated area, there are no kids or pets around, and I have at least an hour to make this soap.
wearing these full face goggles from Brambleberry. They're not full face goggles. <laughs> they cover a decent portion of your face. Yeah. Alrighty, I'll start again.